Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine Island Diamond. Today I'm reviewing a boxed wine. That is right. I had a ton of people over at my house for the 4th of July and uh, I did buy a couple boxed wines because most people aren't as picky as me, just to be honest. And most people aren't. So I went ahead and bought some stuff that I knew was probably middle of the run based upon other reviews and uh, those happened to be Boda boxes. I bought a red, which is their Cabernet, I bought a white, which is their Sauvignon Blanc, and then I bought their Rosé and I realized I've already reviewed the other two. Might as well review this one while I still have some left. Anyway, with that being said, today I'm reviewing the Boda Box Dry Rosé from California. Uh, no specific appellation that I can tell. Um, no specific vintage, though if you look at the bottom, uh, if you don't open it, it's good until March 2023. So uh, if you buy it now, you, you still have some time to enjoy it, and then it should be good for about a month before that if you open it. So. Open it February 2023. Should be good until the expiration date. Oh, and it is 11.5% ABV. Uh, so let's take a look at the color of this wine. From a color standpoint, I'm giving you pale pink orange slash salmon. No artifacts, no cloudiness. All right, so on the nose, medium medium intensity on the nose. And so the first thing I'm getting is a slightly kind of skunky note, like a skunky raspberry, yeah, overripe watermelon. I'm a little bit worried about this now. The alcohol for being 11.5% actually is a little detectable on the nose. There's a little red cherry, there's a little red apple, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it, not getting much else. Um, but how's the taste? So off dry, definitely off dry, but not going towards medium dry so we're still on the slightly drier end of the spectrum acid is medium plus acid um body is medium plus body that residual sugar adds a lot to this body uh the flavor intensity is i'm uh no i'm gonna say the flavor intensity is medium plus but the finish is almost clean and I say almost because the the fruit intensity hits pretty fast on the approach going into the mid palate goes away pretty quickly goes into the finish it's hardly present but the thing that you get in the finish is this just kind of residual sugar effect on the palate and it's not necessarily the nicest thing at least for me it isn't and that skunkiness that I was getting uh, actually ends up not translating to the palate instead it's just kind of generally tart um, it's it's tart off dry with a lot of residual sugar on the palate without being sweet yeah and and then also the alcohol is not present whatsoever on the palate though it is detectable on the nose um, yeah so in terms of this wine well I say let's just get to the blick and figure it out so from balance Man, I'm really struggling on this one, whether or not I'm going to give you zero points or um, or half a point. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and give you zero points. Uh, and the reason why is because there's so much residual sugar. Uh, there's so much heft to the actual body of the wine. Even with the amount of acid, it's not cutting it. And the alcohol doesn't feel like it's integrated, at least on the nose. Like, if I'm going to detect it on the nose, I should at least detect a little bit on the palate and vice versa. Uh, so I'm going to give zero points for balance. Uh, length, for me, it is like a 10 second finish, so I'm going to give you zero points. In terms of intensity, medium on the nose, medium on the palate for the very short amount of time that you can actually taste it before the just residual sugar, the cloyingness kicks in. Uh, so I'll give you half a point because you, you did have some medium aspects. Uh, complexity, I'm, I'm getting some like overly done red fruit notes um, and a little bit of like a overly done melon, but I'm not going to say that this is close to being complex. Uh, even, even not expecting there to be tertiary, I would still hope that there was some, some more care taken into these grapes for this wine. So on that note, uh, no points. In the end, you, you, you are 0.5. I could round up. So, so here's what I'm gonna say. 
If you're someone who doesn't give a crap about wine and you just want to drink rosé at a pool party and drink, what is this, four bottles? Um, drink your hefty amount of that rosé, be responsible, please don't do that. Then I would say this wine is okay. If, if you're someone who cares about wine, this is not a good rosé. Now, I will say that, and I'm going to butcher this name, but the chicken wine, La Vielle Ferrum, um, they have a box wine. And it's the same stuff they put in bottles. And it's way, you might be paying somewhere between four to five dollars more per box. So if you think about it, this was, this was $15. So 15 divided by four, whatever that is, I'll put that number right here. Um, that's how much it was per bottle. If you're willing to pay five dollars more per bottle, you're, you're going to get a much higher quality wine. And quite honestly, if I were you, that that's what I would go with. So, uh, like I said, if, if if your goal is to get blitzed and to slap the bag, then uh, you can do that, and this will work. But uh, if you want to enjoy your experience, get something better. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you like today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had the Boda Box Dry Rosé from California? Am I crazy in giving this a, a bad rating? I, I don't know. Let me know. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. I'm still going to tell you to spend like five or six more dollars and get a much higher quality box wine. It's, it, it's worth it.